What's up? What's up? Good morning. Good morning, people. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to more CSGO news. As always, all today's stories will be timestamped down below. Let's talk about it, though. This first one, the LDLC lineup has now officially been confirmed, and I have no idea where this roster came from. First of all, I think that probably the biggest question mark I have is Rodin. Uh, they call him a young, up-and-coming player, not particularly too young as well. I'm not sure what they saw in this pickup, but even more so, the entire roster, of course, we knew that Major, uh, I keep on calling him Major, so I'm, I apologize, guys. Major X. XMS, Sixer, as well as Happy has now been confirmed alongside Rodin. Those will be your five players going forward. And it was XMS and Sixer. They were actually on trial when Tuanu and Devo Duvek were actually on the team still. And so it does make a question, right? Why drop Devo Duvek? I still think he deserves to be on one of the top three French teams, and apparently they don't think so. And Happy as well, also confirmed by Nell himself. Um, it was already known apparently and expected. Happy will be IGLing the team, and Major will be co-IGLing the team. So this this team is a question mark that's for sure i'm just not sure where the you know where the firepower comes from you know the team themselves says that xms has to kill everyone for this team to probably perform and i i would agree he has to go above and beyond so we'll see where the actual fragging power comes from all in all though i think based off expectations we had from ldlc in 2018 this roster definitely looks like a step down right especially when you can't really blame them too much when you lose players like alex like amanek it could be hard to keep up with that roster but why do you get rid of two and new for six or and then, of course, you drop Devo Duvek, who I still think deserves a spot on the roster as well for a guy like XMS or someone else as well to fill his role. It's a very interesting uh, compilation, especially yesterday, their first match. Uh, I think it was two best of ones against Team Clear. If you don't know who Team Clear is, I don't either, and they split the series. So we'll see how their future goes. And also, thanks to Banks and a great interview, as well as further information on Navi out there. We do know they were going to add Blade. Well, I thought it was going to be a kind of a coaching role, maybe a secondary coaching role. Of course, they already have Kane on the roster. And according to Simple as well, a few days ago, they're going to add a psychologist as well as a dietologist, which I assume is for diet and food kind of things. They're going to add a lot of things. And actually, apparently, according to Flamey as well, and thanks to a great Banks interview, they actually hadn't even used Blade yet before Star Ladder. As well. Now, look. Looking at what I was speaking to Simple about, he said you guys with Blade now joining Na'Vi have got better on your mental side of things, got a coach involved and stuff to help you guys out a little bit more. When I saw you guys in the booth, even when you won, they were very calm, very focused. Is this the new way that we're going to see Na'Vi kind of be now? Is it looking to be less kind of explosive and passionate that sometimes plays against you? Uh, the psychologist and Blade uh, didn't start uh, yet the work, but uh, Blade was trying to help us from internet and uh, he helped us, I guess. So, Brilliant. yeah, and uh, we will start to work with psychologists uh, after this event and we will see how it works. But uh, yeah, it's the way to keep winning is to be calm and not uh, be super happy if you want the first map or stuff like that. So I am very excited to see if that was the Navi we saw before Blade. Hopefully he can add on things. I've always been a fan of if you're going to add a coach, at least in this case, a secondary coach to Kane, as well as a psychologist, as well as a dietologist. Um, if, I hope I'm not pronouncing that incorrectly, but if you're adding all of those things, you've got to think personally, it's going to be an upgrade for this team in the future. I cannot wait to see how that actually affects their gameplay because Navi is one of the few teams out there I would say we could clearly see from several instances they were in dire need of a psychologist for that team to hope it hopefully break up some of the arguments some of the personal issues there I'm very excited to see where Navi can go from here and hopefully it's only up and our next two stories are just like what the heck kind of stories and I'll, I'll try and explain it I actually tried to explain this several several I think it was about a year and a half ago it was something over a year ago I tried to explain Gambit Gaming and it was actually formerly Gambit Gaming now I think they're Gambit Esports they have now been confirmed to have an academy roster and I talked to about this a long time ago because their former academy roster was actually ran by a mentally and physically abusive coach. I tried to draw light to that. Uh, no, it was picked up as, you know, of course, a, a pretty good video, but nothing ever came of it. Actually, Gamut responded to me on Twitter saying they would post an explanation of their academy coach physically hurting, physically abusing, and actually, I think, punching one of the management as well for that academy roster. Nothing ever came of it. We also had academy players come forward and say they were literally scared to do anything on that roster because because he was that much of an impression on them. He was that scary of a guy mentally and physically that he was, they couldn't really do much. They couldn't really complain as well or come public until the roster was actually let go. So we'll see how this Academy roster, I don't mean to bring bad light here guys, but still the last game at Academy roster did not go over too well. Hopefully this one will be a bit different. Either way, it's a, it's a surprising announcement though from a team who has not really done much
much with their main roster, so I'm not really sure where the where the incentive comes to actually bring in an academy roster when you could focus all of that towards your main roster, which certainly needs all the help. So either way, best of luck, very confusing situation. And secondly, speaking of what the heck, we actually have Team Denial. If you guys don't remember, it was actually a few days ago, I think maybe actually even last week, I forgot to cover this as well. They dropped their ex Bravado roster. Remember the Bravado guys? You know, four of the five of them joined the Denial roster, Denial under a new team owner, and then apparently, according to the players, before they left Denial, that being the Bravado squad leaving Denial, they were well taken care of. They could just not reach any contractual agreements, and of course, probably could not get the the amount they wanted for. They have now left for a team on his ATK, and it's actually Denial now signing a new roster, that being another ESL Pro League team from South America as Team Jaguar. So apparently Denial has a fixation for South American teams out there, and they will continue on with Team Jaguar under the umbrella, and apparently Jaguar actually accepted the amount of money they're willing to offer. So Jaguar is now under Team Denial, and it's going to be the former Denial boys, the former Bravado boys, now joining Team ATK. So very confusing situation. Denial hopefully going to be put in a better light here. Apparently they were paying salaries this time, just not paying the ex-Bravado guys enough money to stay. And then very lastly in CSGO news, I do apologize. Bit of a slow episode out there. Hopefully some bigger stories coming soon for all of us. But as well, on top of that, actually interesting find on Reddit yesterday. It was a post about NATO Sapphics. He responded in it himself and did finally confirm, although we did expect this, right? He finally confirmed for all of us. He had received offers from top 20 to 30 teams out there, just not anything panning out in what he actually wanted wanted to play for it, that being the teams that were actually offering him. Uh, you know, I probably expected at least one top 15, especially a top 20 team to offer this uh, kind of guy, that being Nato Sapphics, to IGL and opt for the team. He has a great diverse ability out there. And finally, he actually joined this new, uh, he actually formed this new Danish roster I talked about yesterday, that being LPSP with Sacrone and Percy, his former teammates, as well as two others, um, SMF, and I can't pronounce the last guy's name, but either way, an uh, uh, interesting Danish mixed team out there. Uh, on top of that, because the Percy and Sacrone Trio with NATO Sapphix have actually had decent success when it comes to trying to qualify for majors. They almost made it, and they've definitely done some things on their former team as Team Sprout. So I think this team has power. And finally, I give this guy so much respect because in this post as well, he just pretty much says he was sick of being a free agent, sick of sitting around waiting for offers, so he formed a team. He's waiting to play, and he wants to play with a team, whether it's a mixed team out there with some friends of his uh, from Daneland or whether it's for an official team out there. So it does make me worried that this team will fall apart as soon as one of the players does get offered but either way at least they're playing they're trying to get their name out there so they can actually get offers from better teams so just much respect for that NATO but as always my name is Jake I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of CSK News I will hopefully see you guys back here tomorrow and uh yeah I hope you guys enjoy your day if you're if you're having a, a bad day hopefully the video helped a little bit you know maybe it didn't I'll see you guys next time